Praise the Lord. Welcome back, saints and seekers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining me. Welcome if you are a new subscriber. Thank you for reading the word with us. We are um, in the book of Exodus, and the chapter that we are to now will discuss the Sabbath. We have discussed this before, but we the Lord returns to this in chapter 31 of Exodus. He is telling them how to do... Um, he's given Moses all the details of the tabernacle, the brazen altar, the altar of incense, and he's put it in the people's hearts how to um, craft these things for it. And it continues talking about that, God giving you know, wisdom and understanding to someone. And, you know, he's called us all to do something. We all have some purpose in the kingdom of God. We are referenced as the Lord's body, Jesus Christ being the head. So we are led by the Holy Spirit of God. And... Uh, we let Jesus be the brains, and we are the body doing what the brain tells us to do. So that is how we find our place and our fit. And, you know, we can just even see in our children, they are uh, each turned a certain way. They are more fit for one thing than another. Some may be very gifted in literary, another gifted in uh, math. Uh, sciences, etc., going that way. Some might be very artistic, others mechanical-minded. And, you know, these things come from the Lord. And just as these inherent traits come from the Lord, that we can do uh, physical or tradesman-type work, the Lord has also given, in the New Testament, gifts of the Spirit for the body to be used, you know, and uh, we are all dependent on one another. That was his plan. Not one of us just goes and does it all, but uh, there's, you know, there's a mouthpiece in the church. There's the little finger in the church. <laughs> there's the foot in the church, and there's the heart in the church. So, you may have a gift of mercy or a gift of encouragement. You might have, in the spiritual sense, a gift of tongues and interpretation. And he gives these gifts severally as he wills, he says. So we pray. The Apostle Paul said that we should all pray to prophesy because that is a building up of the church, an encouragement to one another. And in these last days, we need to encourage one another. Well, chapter 31 of Exodus, let's read it. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship to devise cunning work to work in gold and in silver and in brass and in cutting of stones to set them and in carving of timber to work in all manner of workmanship and I behold I have given with him Aholiab the son of Ahisamach of the tribe of Dan and in the hearts of all that are wise hearted I have put wisdom that they may make all that I have commanded thee the tabernacle of the congregation and the ark of the testimony and the mercy seat that is thereupon and all the furniture of the tabernacle and the table and his furniture and the pure candlestick with all his furniture and the altar of incense and the altar of burnt offering with all his furniture and the laver and his foot and the cloths of service and the holy garments for Aaron the priest and the garments of his sons to minister in the priest's office, and the anointing oil and sweet incense for the holy place, according to all that I have commanded thee, shall they do. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, 
Verily my Sabbaths ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Ye shall keep the Sabbath therefore, for it is holy unto you. Every one that defileth it shall surely be put to death, for whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And he gave unto Moses, when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of God. Praise the Lord. Well, we've discussed the Sabbath before, <clears throat> the differentiation that's made between the Old Testament speaking to the children of Israel and in the New Testament where uh, the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ is given to the world outside of just Judaism. Now God has made himself available to commune with all people, whosoever will. And we do that by coming through Jesus Christ. He is the only way that we come to the Father. He is the way, the truth, and the life. The Word tells us no man comes to the Father except through the Son. So he has restored that relationship for us. Our sin keeps us out of the presence of God. And we have sinned. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the only reason that we can go before the Lord and boldly go before the Lord is that we have the blood of Jesus applied to us. It is our sin covering. So when you give your heart to Jesus, you call upon his name, you repent of your sins, you're baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of those sins. It tells us that you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. We know that Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again of water and of spirit. So we want to obey all the Lord has told us to do in the New Testament. We don't want to think that we can go back to the Old Testament and pick up all of that. That's, that's what was um, put on the altar. No one could obey all of the law. No one could. And Jesus, uh, cruci that was crucified. <laughs> the law, the curse of the law. The law was good. The law is from God. But no one could keep it because man just can't. You know, in the New Testament, we are told our righteousness is as filthy rags. So the only righteousness that will get us to heaven is that that Jesus applies to our hearts. And he did that when he died on the cross. He was our redeemer. He took the cost and price of our sin on him. And this is a lot to take in. And over and over we think about it and wonder about it and uh, praise God for it. You know, the... The walk of faith doesn't mean you have pure understanding of all mysteries of God. The walk of faith has to bypass your intelligence at times, your own reasoning, because there are people that can't get there. They would say, now how can you believe in a God you cannot see? Well, we believe by faith. Jesus told his disciples, Thomas in particular, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. But his spirit draws us. We are not just flesh and blood here, but the Lord put a spirit in us, and his spirit speaks to our spirit. The word tells us when the spirit of truth is come, he will lead you into all truth. 
And the fastest way to get to truth is to go before the Lord and to read this word of God for yourself, not to go. We have many uh, different factions of churches called denominations, I guess, and they may teach something that's not in the Word. How would you know that? Well, you've read the Word for yourself, and you just can't be under people that are teaching something that is not in the Word of God. Praise God. Well, we went on a little random thing there, but chapter 31, it discusses the Sabbath even though they were creating and doing all this work for the Lord, the Lord, again, it was important to him. They take that time. It was a sign between him and the children of Israel. They weren't to forget in all the making of all these things, which is work of the Lord, and that's what we can do today. We can get so busy with working for the Lord that we do not get back to relationship with the Lord. And Jesus tells us, without me, you can do nothing. You've got to have a Sabbath rest today in Jesus. That's where your rest is. He is Lord of the Sabbath. I love you. Jesus loves you more. Be blessed.